this outstanding sprinter, Hayless comes right away, wins by three. John McNair, we've seen a new superstar emerge on the Australian racing scene in Hayless. How did the horse uh, come to be in your stable? Well, Simon, um, the owners took the decision that they wanted to race the horse on the eastern seaboard and, and, um, and the opportunity arose. Um, I had trained for them in the, in previously with a horse called Duke Wonga Longa um, and I'd successfully overcome some problems that that horse had had. Um, this horse as well had, had um, feet problems initially when I got him and uh, luckily enough he slowly improved in that regard. So. Uh, it was a combination of things, really. So you knew of him before he got to your stable? I did, yeah. Well, my, one of my best friends trained him in Perth, and uh, and that was the sad part about it. I mean, it was very sad for Jimmy to to lose the horse, but um, uh, the owners were the view, the view that um, Jimmy might not be able to spend the time uh, that would be required with the horse over here. Um, so they were going to always look for a, a trainer from the east, and there'd been a, a number of approaches to them in that regard and I guess I was very very lucky that um, that they chose me it came out of the blue what was the last thing I was expecting. He's a lightly raced horse we didn't see him as a two-year-old uh, he came to the races for the first time as a three-year-old. Um, well I'm not even sure of that I, I, all I know is that uh, Jimmy rang me one day and said listen I've got a very very good horse and, and it was this horse. Of course it's well documented he went on to win his first eight starts and uh, he's obviously showing a lot of ability very early on. Yeah yeah well I mean um, uh, horses like this, this guy, they come along um, uh, once every so often and um, at this point in time I, I still won't get carried away with all the hype. I mean I've got my opinions on the horse's ability but I've pretty much kept that to myself as well. He's a very imposing individual, he's got a lot of size about him, he's 600 plus kilo so uh, that's obviously where a lot of the power comes from. Simon, he, he's got everything as a horse, you know, as a horseman or a trainer that you'd ever sort of wish for. Um, he's got the size, he's got the strength, he's got the attitude, he's got a, um, a massive cruising speed and he's got a, um, an incredibly instant turn of foot and, and all of those things you put them together and it's, it's almost the complete racehorse. He's bred by the Davenports, have been long time clients of yours? I've been with the Davenports for somewhere around about four or five years. Um, terrific people to train for. Um, and pretty much leave almost everything up to me. It's, they're, they're a pleasure to train for. Well, Katie Davenport, a very exciting time for you today here at Flemington. Unbelievable time. I guess you spend your whole life wanting a horse like this, and when it comes along, just amazing. Just have to pinch myself. Now, you guys bred the horse out of a mare, Sing Hallelujah, who's a very successful mare in her own right. She was good, and actually Dad bred her as well. So a um, couple of generations of breeding has gone into Hayless, so, which makes it all the more special. So I guess I mentioned I've known Hayless since he was born, so he's basically part of the family. Hayless is now on the A-list, no doubt about that. <laughs> he is the A-list. Make no mistake about that. And London Calling? Well, I hope so. I guess, you know, that's everyone's dream. It's a track that's been so well worn by Australian sprinters. So, it, I mean, wow, what a thrill that would be. But don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, I guess. And the Spring Carnival, obviously, on there to the moor and then on to the, uh, the Patnack. That's the plan. I guess you can only have one trainer, so we just leave everything up to John. And what John says, we're um, pretty happy with. So, yeah, it looks like Cox Plate Day and then uh, last day at uh, Flemington back again for another straight race. Now, the name Hayless, how did that come about? Well, I was talking to Katie one day and she tells me that, um, that uh, if, if you're, uh, in our terms, you're in, in the upper echelon, you're in the A list. And uh, he's, he's the top of the hay list. Now, you've mentioned before that he, he's had some issues with his feet and you like to work him at home on your track, which has got a bit of a, an uphill in it. Is that uh, to sort of take the weight off his legs? Yeah, it is, Sam, but as well as that, we irrigate that track uh, every day specifically for him. Um, so it's, 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 it's always um, uh, got plenty of give in it, which is what I'm always looking for for him. And, and while I'm down here, I'm working him down at the beach at Geelong, um, which is a little bit harder than I would, would, uh, would like for it to have been. But uh, I just work as close to the water as I can to try and keep it um, a little bit more cushiony for him. He obviously likes the, the uphill going, so you'd have to think that some of those European tracks would probably be quite to his liking as well. Yeah, no, he'll, he'll definitely like that, I can tell you that. Well, you've shelved the plans now for Hong Kong and, uh, and Perth. Is, uh, is Ascot and the likes right on the radar now? Well, provided he performs um, accordingly in the autumn, yeah, there's no reason why, why that's certainly not on the agenda. We saw him win the Group 1 Manicato Stakes last Friday night at Mooney Valley. 
Yeah, well, in, in fairness, Simon, uh, and no disrespect to uh, most of the other horses, um, it probably wasn't the strongest Group 1 field that we've seen um, in a sprint race in Australia for some time, so I'm still not going to get carried away just yet. The horse has got an incredible cruising speed and he just seems to break the other horse's hearts and, and the trainers, their trainers for that matter. Yeah, well, I mean, he's he's um, he's just, like I said, he's got everything. He's, he's just got that, uh, his only chink in his armour is, is his barrier manners. He, he tends to to uh, just get left a bit. Manicato. Racing, beautiful start. Hey, let's just to touch slowly. He got left right. um, neck to half a length the other night and you can't afford to do that when, say, when he gets to Royal Ascot. Um, hopefully by then the horse's confidence will have picked up a bit and um, and he's a, he's a very intelligent animal so I, I expect that uh, hopefully those things will just sort themselves out as we go. He's one up to 1400, how far do you think the horse can get? Uh, I'm very confident he'll run a mile um, and I wouldn't rule out him going further. So it's up and phenomenal now towards the spring, we'll see him in the Gilgai on Sunday, all, all going well, from there on to the Moira then the Patnack? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, the Gill guy wasn't initially on the agenda, um, but since we, we elected to, to go for a spell after the Patnack and concentrate on the autumn, um, the, we were always going to trial up the straight, um, and basically he, this is going to give him his, uh, his straight track experience in readiness for the Patnack farm. There's obviously a strong association there with Glenn Schofield, who's, who's ridden him on, on many occasions. Yeah, yeah. Well, we 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 struck an association early in the piece. It was probably fortunate for Glenn that that he happened to be in Sydney that weekend. That um, that uh, the horse was having his first up start, and um, and you know we sort of we hit it off quite well. Then I was impressed with uh, the fact that he'd done his form very very well. He knew exactly um, all the quirks of this horse, um, and um, he's a pretty smart guy, Glenn. Well, Glenn, what an exciting horse hey, list is. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, you don't win group races uh, too often when you're on travelling on the bridle, and that's what he's done his last two starts. So it's, uh, it's a very exciting horse to ride, for sure. You hardly mooted him today. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he's, he's toyed with his opposition again. Um, he sort of got away from them from the, through the 500 and put the race to sleep, and for me, that was, a, that was enough. He was travelling that quick. I didn't need to ask him for any more. Is he conscious of other horses around him in the running? I think he is until he loses sight of them because he wears the winkers and obviously he gets away from them and he, and he really feels like he puts a, a margin on them and then he seems to just coast along. So um, it would be nice to see if, if, uh, if he's got something out in front of him that he has to catch and chase. And re I would really want to like let him down one day and see what he can do. He certainly seemed to handle the tra straight track no problem today. Yeah, look, uh, he's a true professional. Those, those things don't really affect him. And first time at the valley under the lights didn't worry him. Down the straight today didn't worry him. So... I think he takes it all in his stride. He's, he's just a great racehorse. Haylist, a flying West Australian. Long odds on, he's too good for them. Haylist, how good's that? Haylist by a length on the line to catapult. I think they tried to take him on a couple of times during the Manicata. Were they looking for a chink in the armour, do you think? Well, I don't think there is any. Um, you know, they, the one horse that tried to do it with us in the Manicata, you know, he, he sort of uh, folded pretty quick and I just went on by. So, um, I don't, with this horse, I, I can't see in him any weaknesses at all. Schofield hasn't let go on the favourite. It's Haylist off the rails, leading by two lengths. He's broken reward for effort. True persuasion is still staying on on the inside. And further back as Eagle falls, but it is Haylist. Look at him open up now. This outstanding sprinter, Haylist comes right away, wins by three. Compared to some of the other horses you've ridden, how do you rate him? He's got to be up with one of the best I've ridden, um, if not the best. Uh, he's... He's, and he's untapped, you know, he's, as I say, he hasn't, I haven't even got to the bottom of him yet. So, um, obviously, w when he steps up uh, and the, he meets different opposition and, and, and maybe international opposition, it, it might be a different story. But at this stage, um, he's, just, he's just a freak. And up with the numbers now, you'd have to think those hill tracks in England would suit him right down to the ground. Oh, look, those tracks are suit him. He's, he's tough, he's strong, he's, he's rela even though he's quick, he's relaxed with it. So he's not just a one-dimensional just speedster, he's just, just he's the whole package. What about yourself, John? You ride the horse in work. Does it uh, ever give you any moments there where you're on his back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen, he's, he's, he's got two sides to him. Um, it, and when he gets upset or frightened, he can, he, he can be quite a... Um, not scary, but you're, you're always worried about him hurting himself, not so much me hurting myself. Well, the horse has had a few issues with his feet from his early racing days. 
Yes, um, uh, Jimmy had had problems with the horse probably from about his second start in a race and um, I'd been in constant contact mainly with his heels. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I was chosen to train him, I, I believe. Um, I'm very fortunate that I've got a, a very good farrier, a guy called Graham Baldwin, and, and he's been a, an integral part in getting this horse to, to the position where he is at the present time. Um, and he's probably the scary thing for uh, a lot of other trainers is that his, his feet are probably only about 85% uh, right. Um, that's one of the reasons that the Davenport's made the decision to give him a break after the Patnack. Um, I believe that we'll be able to then um, get his feet to where we, we would like them um, in readiness for, say, the Lightning Newmarket and, um, and maybe internationally from there. Well, Lloyd Williams has compared him to Vane. What do you say to that? Um, yeah, well, it's a huge compliment. Um, Lloyd knows what he's talking about. I mean, um, he's, he's the ultimate ratings guy, so, um, yeah, very impressed. Now, there's a showdown looming, obviously, in the Patnack with Black Caviar, who's undefeated, five from five. Are you looking forward to that? Yes and no. I mean, I never look forward to it. Um, all I do is try and get to these race days without anything happening and, and get him there fit and well, and um, if I can do that, I, he'll do the rest. Do you think horses like Haylist... They definitely bring people back to the races, don't they? Oh, without doubt. Without, without doubt, because he'll have a cult following eventually. Uh, it's getting that way now. I've heard that, um, that the English press are going ballistic over his blinkers because um, they were actually put on... Um, uh, they were a set of blinkers that I had, and I thought they'd suit this horse and the colours that he races in, and, uh, and that's added to the cult following, I think.